All right, I got some good news and I got some bad news. The good news is that I got the turret going. The bad news is I have to figure out how to make it turret. <laughs> so just to I mean, show you basic, basic, if I just go in and because I've got, got a couple of pins tied into classic ladder so far. So if I just go and create virtual relay, output zero, go to my bars, when I toggle that, you'll see I get turret rotation. The, uh, the spaghetti mess hasn't gotten any better. And I realized, as I was hooking up my turret board, that the 7i76ED does not help me in the case of requiring a sourcing output. So what I did was, for now, I hooked up Relay. The Relay is going to control the turret indexing for the time being. But what I may do because I don't have any major I.O. on my millboard, and because I built the millboard myself, I can control the I.O. So I may uh, swap to 7i76e, and then just put the E.D. into the mill. That would, that would uh, eliminate the need for this relay. Because what happens is I've got a 24 volt signal coming in here, but then I've got a single 24 volt coming out here. And that is what makes the connection to 24 volt on the relay. So unless I can figure out a way to reroute this somehow which it's i think it's impossible because it's all attached to a pcb so unless i enable and disable the entire board and then just direct line the 24 volt signal i don't think it's gonna work for me so that's that's some bad news there but the nice thing is that i've got one of each board so and so, yeah, moving right along, I mean, I've got, I've basically got everything working, not to the nth degree, but at least to, uh, to the point where I can be pretty happy with the, the progress that I've made in the last couple of days. I mean, I've only had this thing for about a week, a little over a week, and I've got, oh, here, I got spindle. I've got move it up. Got axis. I have limit switch. Hell yeah. See that? That's the first time I've actually tested that switch out. Pretty cool. So I've got basic makings of a CNC machine. I've got movement, I've got spindle, and I've got turret. Oh, and while I got you here, I also let's see how so that's going to be an issue. How do I get out of it when I hit the limit switch? So I'm going to have to play around with that as well. You know, on the other machines, I would just... <laughs> on that machine, I would just push it off of the off of the switch. Well, let me pause, come back, and I'll, uh, I'll explain what I did uh, that made me all happy and excited. Well, what a great time to test out my soft limits and... <laughs> hard limits and make sure that the machine actually zero returns and, and all that stuff works. Uh, actually, the first time I've 
had to uh, first time I've actually homed the machine out so anyway uh, back to what I was saying so all right so this machine this board 24 volt in 24 volt relay 5 volt encoder field IO on the 7i76 series all these guys here if you got 24 volt going in it wants to see 24 volt or a a uh a threshold of you know there or about there's um like a fluff factor so depending on what your input voltage is for your field io your say you got 24 volts your low point threshold is like 14 or 18 volts after that it doesn't see it so if you've got you know eight or ten volts coming in then you can you know you can you can get down lower but you can't go higher um but but these two cables here are the strobe or the count and the home on this uh, cheese wheel encoder. If you watch my instructional video on the 7i76 overview, this socket here Pin 16, 17, 18, and 19. You can set those up for Jog MPG. Jog MPGs typically are 5 volt. When you set those four inputs up for manual pulse generator encoders, I'll go into my HAL configuration, and I'm going to show you. You'll get, if we go to 7i7600, ENC 0 and 1. So when we set it up for the two encoders, we get encoder 0, encoder 1. We get a rudimentary slew of things. We get count, index enable, position, raw count, and reset. We don't get A, B. We don't get all that fancy stuff. We get count. We get index. Problem is that looking at the encoder stuff here, it wants to see the A, B pulses. I'm not sure if there's a way to fix that, but the way around it is to go down, 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 down to our input 16, 17, 18, and 19. If we look at 18 and 19 in our watch list, I still get binary I.O. I could still see those two signals coming in on these input pins. Even though Even though I've got a 24 volt field voltage and I've got the pin set up for encoder counts, because they're set up for the encoders, it drops the threshold to 5 volt. So I've got just enough I.O. pins to drive the 5 volt encoder for my turret. And still have two pins left for my Jog MPG. And as far as the spindle encoder goes, the spindle encoder goes to the dedicated encoder socket here. So I've got a 5 volt going out, got ground, and I've got my index, and I've got my phase A. Because it's only a single 
It's only a single phase feedback with index. So I don't have the fancy schmancy, the A, the A minus, and the B, and the B minus. I just have single strobe pulse coder with a little notch cheese wheel with a uh, an index section right there. So a little update on Mr. Turret. I think uh, I think I'm in the right ballpark here. So what I've got going on, it's still rudimentary, but I have it to where I've got my base I/O assignments pretty much almost figured out. And if I go into my HAL configuration. I'm doing this all through the test how command, so I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to retrace my footsteps with this one. But what I've got going on is I figured out how the basic tool change commands work through I/O control. So under I/O control, I/O control zero has a whole slew of tool preps and and whatnot. And those come pre-packaged with their own net signals. Net change confirm, net change request, tool number, prepare confirm, prepare request. The turret count, home, and index are my own. So I've got those, I've got some of that stuff linked. If I go into tool change confirm, I've got that tied to a classic ladder output. And it's also tied to IO control tool change. Tool change request, classic ladder in three, I.O. control, tool change. Tool number, I have that tied to classic ladder S32 in, and then I.O. control, tool prep number. So I've got, well, I've got it set to, t to two S32 ins, so I have to, uh, i got to play around with that a little bit, but I've got it. Yeah, so the tool number takes into consideration that that tool number is actually linked to a couple of things. It's linked to well, I've got it linked to two, two signals right now, but and then tool prepare confirm and tool prepare request. I have those tied. So again, it, it's I still have to play with it, but I'm making progress. I'm, I've I've gotten it to the point where. If I call up a tool that's already prepared, passes the information, and it, it just terminates. When I call up a tool that isn't in that station, indexes a turret, bounces back, counts up here. I have, uh, I have the encoders tied in a way that every time it goes around to tool station number one, it zeroes out the counter. So if the counter cycles around, I'll show you. It's going to take a couple of attempts, but all we have is time, right? Back to boom station one. It triggers the it triggers a count up because there's a there's a pulse for the index, but there's also a pulse for the home position. So each of these little little ticks on the cheese wheel, these are the count up for each station. And then at station number one, it's got the home confirmation for the two-step encoder. You'll see that. It's in station one, it lights up the counter input for the um, preset value. And the preset value is set to one. So every time it hits that, it presets back to one. So now every time I index around, counts up. 
So internally, Classic Ladder knows where it's at. I just have to tie that back to the actual machine count. So now the other thing is that there was an issue with these Emco turrets where the turret indexes until it hits one of these counters, indexes back and locks in place. Once it locks in place, it breaks that signal. So when you go to index again, it'll go, it'll index, it'll start to index, it'll catch the cheese wheel, and it'll go back, and it'll just go tuk, 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 and I found out a way around that by means of, if I go into my, where are you? If I go into my custom hell, this section right here, this load debounce count equals one. Add F debounce dot zero servo thread set P debounce dot zero dot delay 600. So I'm assigning a delay on the encoder. So when it passes, when it, when it first starts to pass, it has enough time delay to oversee the tick until it sees the next tick and then it triggers to back up, to back up. If I take out that debounce, it just goes, it just goes, it just ratchets back and forth. But that was the quick down, dirty, cheap and easy way that I found to overshoot that first little tick and then in, uh, count up and index back to the proper number. There's also another uh, HAL debounce that I want to mess with and see if that actually does me a little bit better. But that's uh, it's kind of where I'm at so far with this thing. And once I get my comparison logic and, and whatnot and get this thing to actually pull the tool number that I want, compare it to where it's at, and then know enough to index around to that position, then I'll be in good shape. So it's, it's going to be a little bit more logic involved. But so far, I, I think I'm uh, down a good path with this.